Nate the Great and the Halloween Hunt by Marjorie Weinman Charmat, illustrated by Mark Simont, a yearling book. My name is Nate the Great. I am a detective. Tonight I got into trouble. Tonight I was locked in a haunted house with my dog Sludge. I was in big trouble. There were no pancakes there. I was on a case, a Halloween case. It started about an hour ago. My dog Sludge and I were looking out our window. We were waiting for witches and clowns and Draculas and princesses to ring our doorbell. Suddenly, I heard a scratch at the door, a loud scratch. I went to the door and opened it. Someone was standing there in a long dress, a bonnet, and a shawl. It was Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother carrying a trick-or-treat bag in her big teeth, his big teeth. The grandmother was Annie's dog, Fang. I, Nate the Great, did not think that Halloween was a scary holiday. Until now. Where is Annie? I asked him. Does she know you're out alone on Halloween? I did not want wait for an answer. I dropped some treats into Fang's bag. He wagged his tail and went down the walk. I closed the door behind him. Sludge crawled out from under the, a chair. I said to him, be brave on Halloween. We do not believe in ghosts and goblins or grandmothers with big teeth. Sludge went back to the window. The doorbell rang. I opened the door. Annie and Rosamond were outside. They were both dressed as Little Red Riding Hood, and they were each carrying a basket covered with a red cloth. Your grandmother was just here, I said to both of them. I know it, Annie said. This is Fang's first year out alone on Halloween. I put some treats in his bag, I said, and now I'll give you some for your baskets. My basket is already heavy with treats, Rosamond said. I can't carry any more. Mine isn't full yet, Annie said. She lifted the napkin from her basket and I dropped some treats inside. I'm finished with trick-or-treating, Rosamond said. I came here to ask for your help. What kind of help? One of my cats, little Hex, is missing, Rosamond said. He hates Halloween. Every year he tries to hide, but this year I can't find him. Where are your other three cats? I asked. Perhaps little Hex is with them. Oh no, Rosamond said. Every Halloween, Super Hex, Big Hex, and Plain Hex go to the old haunted house on the next street and help to haunt it. But little Hex is too scared, so he hides. Wait until tomorrow, I said. Halloween will be over, and little Hex will come out of his hiding place. But he might be really lost, Rosamond said, so I'm worried. I can't eat any of my treats. Please help me. Very well. Nate the Great will take your case. Tell me, when was the last time you saw little Hex? He was following Annie and me, Rosamond said. Where did you go tonight? I asked. First I put on my costume, Rose, Rosamond said, and then I went to Annie's house. Little Hex followed me there. And then what? Annie finished dressing up Fang. She sent him on his way. Then Annie and I went to Claude's house. He gave us some cookies. We put them in our baskets. Next, we went to Esmeralda's house. She gave us her special Halloween biscuits. Was little Rex Hex still following you? Yes, Rosamond said. There's Esmeralda, asked Annie and me to help her get into her gorilla costume. So Annie and I stepped into her house, and little Hex did too. Annie and I helped Esmeralda become Gorilla. 
The three of us started to leave Esmeralda's house. Then that's when I noticed that little Hex was gone. Then he's probably still in Esmeralda's house, I said. No, we looked everywhere in her house, Annie said. Was Esmeralda's door open or closed while you were helping her with her costume, I asked. Open, Annie said. So little Hex probably escaped outside, I said. It is hard to find a small black cat in the dark, but I will go out and hunt for him. Oh, thank you, Rosamond said. I will go home and wait for you to bring him back. Rosamond and Annie left. I wrote a note to my mother. Dear mother, I am on a Halloween case. I am hunting for little Hex, who would rather hide than hunt. I will be back unless... A grandmother with big teeth was them on me. Love, Nate the Great. I got a flashlight. Sludge and I went out into the night. I saw two pirates ahead of us. Excuse me, I said. Have you seen Rosamund's cat, little hex? The pirates turned around. They were Finley and Pip. We have just started our rounds, Finley said, and all we've seen are a dancing artichoke and a robot. Sludge and I walked up and down the street. We saw more pirates and monsters and kings and artichokes, but we did not see little Hex. Where could he be? What would a scared cat do on Halloween? I asked Sludge. Then I had an idea. Perhaps Little Hex wasn't scared anymore. Perhaps I should be looking for a brave cat and not a scared one. Perhaps this year Little Hex is learning how to hunt. And haunt, I said to Sludge. I, Nate the Great, don't believe in haunted houses, but we must go to that old house and hunt for Little Hex. Sludge did not look happy, but we walked to the old house. It looked haunted. It looked like every ghost who had ever haunted anything was haunting this house on this night. Sludge and I crept up the front steps. They creaked. I knew they would. I knocked on the door. It creaked. I knew it would. I opened the door. It squeaked. I knew it would. I stepped into the house. Sludge slunk in. I called out. Super Hex, Big Hex, Plain Hex, Little Hex, and Hex, are you here? You have one minute to show your faces. Then Sludge and I are leaving. I started to count the seconds. One, two, three, four, slam! The door shut behind us. I tried to open it. It was stuck. There must be another door, I said to Sludge. I flashed my flashlight around. I saw cobwebs and old furniture draped with white sheets. I heard clinking and clanking and shrieking. Is that you, cats? I shouted. I saw three pairs of eyes glowing at me in the dark. Cat's eyes. They belonged to Super Hex, Big Hex, and Plain Hex. Then they disappeared. I flashed my flashlight all over the house. The three cats were gone. But how did they get out of the house? How could Sludge and I get out? I heard more clinks and clanks and shrieks. The cat ha had left. So what was making those ghostly noises? I, Nate the Great, now believed in haunted houses. We had to get out of here. I found another door. It was locked. I tried windows. They were locked. There must be a way out, I thought. The cats got in and got out. I kept looking, and then in front of me I saw a ghost. I don't believe in ghosts, so how could I see one? But it was creeping towards me, dressed in a white sheet, and suddenly I knew I had solved the case. Little Hex must be under the sheet, learning how to haunt. I lifted the sheet. Sludge was huddled under it. He was hiding. I unwrapped him. He led me to another room. He found a hole. It was small. But he dug in it, making it bigger. It was big enough for us to crawl into. It led to the outside. When 
was when he followed her into Esmeralda's house. Then he was gone. Esmeralda and Annie and Rosamond had searched Esmeralda's house, but they could not find little Hex. So he must have gone out into the night alone. But why would he do that when he was scared of Halloween? Sludge was scared of Halloween too. He had hidden under a chair in my house and under a sheet in the haunted house. Perhaps Little Hex was hiding under something. But where? We must go where Little Hex was last seen, I said. Sludge and I went to Esmeralda's house. She was there, eating from her bags of treats. I am looking for Little Hex, I said. He isn't here, Esmeralda said. Rosamond and Annie and I looked all over the house. Want some of my treats? My bag got too heavy to carry around. I stared at Esmeralda's treats. Suddenly I remembered something. I remembered lots of things. I remembered clues. I have no time for treats, I said. I must go to Rosamond's house right away. Sludge and I rushed to Rosamond's house. She was lying on a sofa. She was still wearing her little red riding hood costume. She looked strange in it. Rosamond looked strange in everything. I was just at Esmeralda's house, I said. She was eating some of her treats. I'm still not hungry, Rosamond said, pointing to her covered basket on a table. I'm too sad to eat. I think I know where little Hex is, I said. Where? Where is he? Rosamond clutched her red cloak. Nate the Great walked over to Rosamond's basket. I lifted up the red cloth that was on top of it. And there was little Hex, fast asleep in the basket. It's little Hex, Rosamond cried. Yes, I said. I, Nate the Great, say that you've been carrying him around ever since you left Esmeralda's house. I have? Yes. He must have crawled into your basket at Esmeralda's house while you and Annie were busy helping Esmeralda become a gorilla. But how could he fit inside? Rosamond asked. Where are the treats I collected? There are a few left in the basket, I said. Little Hex probably ate most of them and took their place under the napkin and hid there. Sludge hid under, the ch under a chair and a sheet tonight. When you're scared, you might under, hide under something. Sludge gave me the, that clue twice. Rosamond stroked Little Hex. But how did you know that Little Hex was hiding in my basket, she asked. He could have been hiding anywhere. You gave me the clue, I said. You told me that you and Annie started out together doing trick or treat. When you got to my house, Annie had room in her basket for treats, but you said your basket was too heavy. How come your basket was heavier than Annie's? They should have been the same because you both went to the same places. Nate the Great, say that your basket was full of little hex and he was full of your treats. No wonder it was heavy. I'm so happy to have little Hex back, Rosamond said. Let's have a Halloween party to celebrate. I'll go outside and invite everybody I see. Including your grandmother with the big teeth, I asked. Sure, Rosamond said. Fang probably collected more treats than anybody. I believe that, I said, but I will never be hungry enough to take food from Fang's fangs. Sludge and I left. The case was over. Halloween was almost over. No more hunting, no more haunting. What had caused all the clinking and clanking and shrieking in that old haunted house? I would never know. I, Nate the Great, say that some mysteries are best left unsolved. Marjorie Weinman Shermat has written more than 130 books for children and young adults which have been translated into 17 languages. She lives with her husband, author Mitchell Sharmat, in Tucson, Arizona. They have two sons, Craig and Andrew. Look for Marjorie Weinman Sharmat's other random house children's book series, Does Shed. Mark Simont 
won the Caldecote Medal for his artwork in A Tree is Nice by Janice May Udry. He has illustri illustrated 20 books in the Nate the Great series. He lives in West Cornwall, Connecticut.